invite the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. Karibu, Your Excellency. Thank you. Asante sana, Mweshmiwa. Tafadhali tuketi chini wale mko na biti. Asante sana, Mweshmiwa, Governor wetu wa Nakuru. Mweshmiwa Moses Kuria, Waziri Usika, Principal Secretary is present. The leadership of National Youth Service, Wazazi Wote, Walio Tembea Katika Shere Hiya Muhimu, Na Graduates, Distinguished Guests. Kwanza Mimi Natakani Pongeze, Wasimamizi Wa NYS, Mwenyekiti, Director General, Na Kamati Yote, Na Wale Officers Wote, Walio Shiriki Katika Mafunzo, Ya Hawa Vijana Wetu Wa Kenya. And I am glad to be here as we celebrate the achievements of our youth in their preparation to serve their nation and mark another important milestone for the National Youth Service community who have made this event possible. An event like this is particularly important because its role in, re in reminding us of the substantial reasons we have as a people of Kenya to be hopeful about the future despite the challenges we face. Old and familiar threats of war, conflict, insecurity, underdevelopment, famine, disease, and crime have been joined and intensified by terrorism, transnational organized crime, pandemics, and climate change. Consequently, states around the world are combating these threats to a great extent, with an increasing number struggling at enormous cost on livelihoods and economic development. Under these conditions, high rates of population growth have not only increased the number of citizens overall, many national populations of developing countries grow younger by the decade. Our continent now has the world's youngest population with a median age of 19, and 25 countries with the youngest median age are in Africa. What this means is that the youth are no longer just an indispensable component of society. They define the basic character of our nations and determine the direction and speed of our journey into the future. Depending on the effectiveness of the measures taken to prepare for the present and future, young people are likely to inherit the problems that bedeviled older generations and struggle under their worsening impact. This is the essence of the two contrary perspectives of Africa's youth phenomenon. On one hand, there are opinions which see in the population explosion the threat of serious instability on account of having too many young people who are unemployed and vulnerable to various socioeconomic, health, security, and climatic shocks. To this school of thought, the young people represent a ticking time bomb, which will explode sooner or later into a myriad of acute socioeconomic and political problems. On the other hand, there are perspectives which see in the youth a stronger capacity for effective harnessing globalization, innovation, and leadership in newer, more positive directions. Contrary to the youth bomb perspective, this standpoint perceives the runaway burden of our population as a singular opportunity to harness a demographic dividend by utilizing the youth as an agent of harmony and stability, frontline actors in combating various threats, drivers of greater productivity and intensified competitiveness. Both perspectives are right. If we carry on with business as usual and neglect the imperative of taking extraordinary measures 
to transform our economies in order to give millions of young people a better chance to build stronger nations, we will definitely have a serious crisis in our hands. The difference between the two scenarios depends on how intentional, how ambitious, urgent, and futuristic the development agenda is. It is clearly evident that for a few decades now, Kenya has been firmly and emphatically committed in investing significantly in a future that will exploit the demographic dividend to drive national development agenda. This is for a while now. Primary education has been free of charge with huge subsidies in secondary education and even university education under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda will not implement itself. On the contrary, our best chance of actualizing the Kenya we want in social, economic, political, and even cultural terms is by wasting no opportunity in equipping our young people with the skills and capabilities that are not only competitive and relevant in the current global market, but also firmly aligned with the imperatives of the radical transformation of our economy. Our review of the CBC increase of teachers, infrastructural expansion of learning facilities, development of technical and vocational education and training institutions throughout Kenya represent one side of the positive interventions aimed at securing the greatest share of youth dividend to power national growth. The other component of these measures are strategic interventions set out in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda in order to significantly enhance the productivity of labor across five priority sectors, create millions of jobs for young people over the next years, over the next 10 years, provide necessary infrastructure and support for them to engage in innovation and creation as well as other forms of employment in the digital economy. The National Youth Service is not just a witness and a participant of our bold intention to enlist the youth as the leaders and drivers of Kenya's transformation. It is an example of a dedicated program for empowering our youth for a lifetime of service across all sectors. This organization has re-emerged to become a highly trusted incubator of disciplined, self-motivated, skilled, productive youth who continue to make significant contribution to the success of various entities in both public and private sectors. I think the examples given by Minister Kuria in the collaboration with various state departments speak volumes of the capacity and the potential of NYS to power the transformation of our country. Thanks to the dynamism of the National Youth Service, the graduates of this institution are much admired, effective workers in every field, from agriculture to national security and administration, as well as building and construction, research, development, and innovation. Because of the rationalization of learning pathways in tertiary, institution, uh, tertiary education, a number are also finding themselves on their way to careers in highly competitive domains. Recognizing the place of youth in national transformation in general, and that of NYS in powering the plan in particular, we have embarked on a strategic re-engineering of the National Youth Service to enhance the capacity of the institution to take up greater numbers of trainees, position it on the path of financial sustainability through revenue generation, thereby creating the conditions to support the expansion of enrollment to 100,000 young people annually in the next five years. Let me repeat that this year, 
we are graduating 10,000 young people from this field. Next year, in the first cohort, it will be 15,000. In the next cohort, it will be 15,000. So next year alone, 30,000 young people from across Kenya will graduate from NYS as we position NYS as the incubator for all other arms of government. And let me report here that when I was here last year, I did commit that we were going to include the National Youth Service in the review of salaries and working conditions of both the police, the prisons, and I committed that we are going to include the NYS, and we did. Let me confirm 